lot of individuals who are not truthful. What do you see the future holding? Well, the future is a more of a continuation of what we've already gone through in the past. I mean, let's face it, until science gets what science has always demanded, there's never going to be an end to this question of whether the Sasquatch exists or not. No matter how clear a film or a video is, or how obvious it could not have been in fact, there's always going to be doubt. So, and I've talked to professors at Smithsonian and the National Geographic Society, and I've often asked, what does it take, what would it take to pick the Sasquatch from the realm of cryptozoology and put into the realm of everyday zoology? And they're always unanimous. They need a body or a piece of the body or skeletal remains. And no amount of wishful thinking and politically correct thinking is ever going to change that because that's just the way it works. Yeah. yeah. I think all researchers go, researchers, investigators, I think I like to call them investigators. I prefer uh, that term. More than researchers. Uh, to me, it seems like um, weekend warriors don't really qualify. <laughs> hollering today um regular research is just there's so much involved with that you know I, you don't see people going out into the forest with their notebooks like you do <laughs> um folks after our treks every day thomas comes back and he writes in his book the happenings of the day and you don't see people it's more of just a, let's go out there and see what's there, which to me is just a loose investigation, which is a good thing, okay? The more the better. I don't necessarily feel that people should take their evidence and put it out into the world. I think they should hold a lot of that. Because um, it, it could come in very handy, should we do discover Bigfoot and it's brought to science. But um, it is an investigation. It is, there's a lot to this boots on the ground. I have learned that. And maybe it gave me a little spark to do some more of this stuff. Absolutely. I mean, you may not be able to prove the Sasquatch existence of the rest of the world, but you'll, you'll have a good time trying to satisfy your own personal curiosity. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I personally gave up on the idea of proving the Sasquatch's existence to the community as a whole by 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I do this now still because I want to know, you know. And if I can somehow prove it to everybody else at the same time, well, that's a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. But who knows if I ever get a real good look at a Sasquatch close up where there's no doubt, I may be just happy. Hey, I was right. What the hell with everybody else? <laughs> <laughs> so Jim was saying that uh, when we, when that mean you, Thomas, walked up, uh, there was a wood knock. Didn't you hear that howl over there? Oh, just now? Yeah. Well, there was a I have a feeling some yahoos are having fun at our expense because they know who we are. Yeah. Could be. Maybe. And, uh, let's see how the day progresses. Well, one of the howls I swore was over here, and you said it was over there. Well, that first one I heard was over there. Now it's uh, that one, that last one was over, over there. Over there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and if you go by the directions, I do believe that's where the road in the the other side, yeah. the campsite across yeah. the thing. Yeah. Over the years, uh, researching all through Canada and in the U.S., do you have a particular place that your favorite all-time place to research? Well, uh, my favorite place is the easiest one to get to, and that would be the Harrison Lake, Harrison Hot Springs area. Mm -hmm. The long history of uh, 
Sasquatch is Sasquatch. I wonder what name Sasquatch was first coined in the first place by the late J.W. Burns in the Stahelis Reserve. That's probably my favorite, and it's also the easiest to get to, and I don't have to spend too much money on gasoline to get there. Yeah, but I sure enjoy coming down here to Washington State whenever I can. Like where we are now, south of Mount St. Helens. What a beautiful place. Yeah. And there, there's a Sasquatch. There, there's no doubt that they live in this area too. And, you know, Oregon's the same way in Northern California, of course. And I'd like to get to them more often, especially as I'm getting older. But, no, my favorite place has to be right at I mean, I, my first 24 years was in the Rocky Mountains of Alberta, and that was fascinating enough. But all I wanted to do was get to the west coast of British Columbia on a permanent basis. And I finally did that in 2002, and I haven't regretted a day of it. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you that the Bigfoot community wholeheartedly, um, not just values your uh, what you brought to the table, and you've helped us learn and remember to stay grounded, um, to feel, and to not deviate like you say, yeah. you know, don't deviate from the facts. You don't have to fluff up the experience. You know, it, yeah. it's so simple um, to just come out and try to have it happen. Or get, it, do you think it's luck? Do you think it's just after time after time, maybe so, you'll see something? Or is it just pure luck that we happen to be in the right place at the right time? That's exactly what I think. I think all these methods and theories about attracting a Sasquatch, well, the last 50 years, they sure haven't worked very well, have they? The one really good film we possibly have of a real Sasquatch, they were riding horses and they came across her very suddenly. You know? mm -hmm. Most encounters seem to happen when they come near people rather than the other way around. So I think it's always, always a roll of the dice and a shot in the dark. And of course, the odds are stacked against us. Right. Because if the Sasquatch is rare as I think it is, like one for every hundred bears in any given area, I'm not surprised at all they're not seen more often. Yeah. I am too. I've had uh, many thoughts about the whole uh, concept of how many Bigfoot are uh, out there because I've heard some numbers that I just feel are outrageous outrageously high mm -hmm. and in my world I think that we've got a population that is just holding on mm -hmm. that is breeding population but it's at that cusp of possibly decline there's you always know? that risk I don't think there's a threat to the Sasquatch from people looking or hunting for it. Yeah, no. If there is a threat to the Sasquatch's existence, it's loss of habitat. You know, uh, if there are low, like the late Grover Krantz thought anywhere between, and just talking about Washington, Oregon, Oregon, California, not including Canada, he thought anywhere between 200 and 2,000. Any fewer than that, it doesn't seem to be a viable breed population any more than that I think you thought they'd be seen see more of all the yeah. time. Yeah and I, I tend to go along with that. I like to say there's probably one Sasquatch for every hundred bear in every given area. Mm -hmm. So but if they are so low in number that losing one could terminate the species, well they're doomed anyway. It's gonna happen yeah. sooner or later. Yeah. Possibly without we ever being aware of it. Yeah. You know, I I think sightings continue on in the same way as they always have. It's just we hear about them more often because of inventions like the internet and communications a lot faster. And hell, I still remember doing everything by snail mail. <laughs> you know, yeah. you'd send ask someone a question and wait a week and a half to get an answer. Right. <laughs> now we can do it in two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure coming down here to Mount St. Helens and knowing that you were going to be here was quite an honor. Well, the honor's mine, and, uh, I'm admire your show. I 
enjoy uh, enjoy its content, and I wish there were a lot more of like it. It's all about the conversation. Yeah. It's opinions, conversation. Um, during our time here, we've had, you know, we're fortunate that we could sit around around that campfire and talk about our opinions, and it was okay. Yep. Nobody has to agree, but they're all ideas, and and. Um, Oh no, there's no, there's no reason to be confrontational. Right. Well, a good friend of mine in the Sasquatch field is Ron Moorhead. You know, and he's exa- way off into into well, I wouldn't say way off. He's into the you know the the more spiritual aspects of right. of the mystery, and that's what he believes. Whereas I'm strictly zoological, and we've had long debates, Ron and I, and we discuss it, and we respect each other's opinion. That's why I say I'm 90% convinced it's a zoological, and I keep 10% off just in case he's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so when I'm when it's, if I'm ever ever proven wrong, and I don't believe that will happen, but if I'm ever proven wrong, I can't I won't be able to say I was 100% an egghead. <laughs> <laughs> so in that aspect, we have celebrity hopes. Okay. Oh yeah. And your feeling about them is what? Is what you, how do you feel they're impacting the subject? I detest them because they're taking a subject I've devoted my life to and uh, making a mockery of it, in my opinion. That's my personal opinion. Uh, there's many reasons for those are hoax. Research is hoax, mainly for, uh, for what I politely refer to as Ivan Mark syndrome. Ivan Marks is the first I ever knew of this. It's a researcher who may have been involved in something authentic once, was the center of attention for a while. But when the attention died down, it turned out the attention was more important than the subject. So they start hoaxing to remain the center of attention. And it works until they get caught. Then they spend the rest of their time on damage control. But they'll always have a certain number of believers who will go along with every word they say, no matter what. And of course, they're trying to make their YouTube channels pay and yeah, yeah, and their Facebook pages and everything like that. And they just like going around pretending to be the new Mulder and Scully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I know I got bit by the bug now, the Squatch bug, and uh, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to have to go out there myself. And because I want to be thought of as um, pertinent to the table, to the cause. You know, I want to be oh, an overall, be well rounded in the subject. Yeah. And But remain true to your character. You know, keep doing what you do, don't be influenced. By stuff when you have keep your skeptics skeptical and questioning mind that's the best quality of research you can have I agree yep I agree well thank you Thomas for thank spending you, some time with me oh it was a pleasure and, uh, I hope to do it again sometime maybe up in Canada <laughs> more turkey <laughs> more dressing more potatoes <laughs> done <laughs> Yeah, she makes uh, she makes the dressing instead of the stu- or the, yeah, instead of the stuffing. Yeah. Uh, her dad's Texas recipe, and that I I don't think Wait it's up. Thanksgiving without that <laughs> cornbread stuffing. Does anyone kind of know what the Scottish stuffing is? That's yellow. Eggs. What? And it tastes as horrible as it looks. Eggs. Haggis. <laughs> I don't know. Yellow? My, that's, my that's late, yellow egg is my late father. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it out. Yeah. My late father in law would always make the holiday. Dinner, <laughs> I knew she right? was going to do that. Of course, I was married to Pamela, so I had to go. I mean, it was great. But he'd make this dressing that was this horrible yellow color. It was a Scottish dressing. Jim was his name. And he kept making Batteries it time and time again because he loved it, but everybody is it? else, Where is it? including his wife and daughter, Ooh, hated Lincoln. it. I have another and one charged right here. I'm going to impress the father-in-law here. Jim, give me some of that 
Y'all stop him, you know, first time I was there. Okay, we're coming Thank around, Mondo, be prepared. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, keep, going. Really keep going, keep <laughs> going. Years ago, and I'd have to deal with his wife cooking. Good, I'm recording that night. What a nightmare. No, I'm not recording. <laughs> I hate it. I don't even eat when I go up there. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Every dinner they made was excellent beyond reproach. Never had a problem with anything. Super. Super duper. Yep. By like Jerry Cooper. <laughs> Any rumors to the contrary, I deny them for a of my feet. Anybody grave the shower? And I would be much better Not yet. if <laughs> Nikki would just try to stop killing me out and push it. Oh my god. <laughs> You could be the first no, shower good. tester. No thanks. <laughs> I put my hand in it. It's warm. Is it? Yeah, it's good. It's going to be a good shower tomorrow, Jen. It's shower day. I don't know what it was. I had never asked for this. Most obnoxious thing the devil ever put on a plate. Oh, that's yeah. good. Hooked to propane. Yeah, yeah, it's got water, He's hot dead water, now, so and everything. Get away with it. <laughs> well, you have to go to town because you have to pick up Destiny. Even my wife Pamela, she hated it. She wouldn't eat it. None of them would eat it. Home. Nobody would. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna shower yeah, and get him. ready. Okay. So it got and to the point he was making two dressings for every dinner. One that people would well, eat. And don't they do? Don't, don't they do a blood no. two pudding one too? Because you'll be there like that. Got me. I have no idea. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. They can do with what I got. But the Korean blood pudding isn't bad. It just tastes like. Sausage, you know. I still have to make centerpieces and blow up balloons and all that. Aha, you were funny. Nikki, you lied to me. I did. <laughs> I lied. I was dismayed and beside myself. You were telling me pumpkin head stories. You deserved it. They're not stories. <laughs> They're warnings. They're warnings. Because <laughs> I care about your well-being. I want you to be prepared. Well, Nikki, just have it in your mind that you'll just crush that sucker and make pumpkin pie head. Pumpkin pie head. <laughs> pumpkin roll. Listen, I had to tell them that I was carrying an aluminum cane. Mm. And if they scared me, I was going to knock them out. Uh, you don't have to worry about pumpkin head. It's the memo of bone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that it's that he like stops and hides <laughs> in the dark and then comes out of nowhere that is so only partially true <laughs> it is true <laughs> it is true is it on him I want you to be, I just, just stand there you walk right into me <laughs> yeah you stopped of course I didn't move out of your way as I knew you were coming <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Good times already. <laughs> Only one day down and well, yesterday, we, yesterday we memories. Day of rest, so. If she yeah. goes in the woods today, she's in for a big surprise. Because every bear today. that ever there was will gather there for <laughs> certain because today's the day. Nick, he has a bear pig. <laughs> remember, Nicky. Always remember when you're camping. Late at night. Keep your fire. It's going to be another one bright. of those nights. <laughs> because they don't like it in the light. The men without bones. <laughs> now... Imagine that in pitch blackness up there on that mountain. <laughs> you hear a scrampling through. That's them. I'm trying to be brave, right? <laughs> Good luck in the morning. <laughs> no, and then and trees really crash down really out of Washington. nowhere. We're in Washington, man. So you really got to watch out for those West Coast reaper roaches. Reaper roaches? Yeah, reaper roaches. <laughs> Some say the prairie predator leeches are around here too. Mm -hmm. The crotch wasp is a really bad one. You be very careful. <laughs> Tree octopuses? <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Pacific Northwest tree octopus. 
real. You can hear them. They make that sound. <laughs> yeah. When you hear that, just run. Ooh, just run. you Turn just made your run. new intro, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> That's your new intro. <laughs> some place you were people saying think, that some people work. actually think the tree octopus is the, the source of the member that bones legend. Weren't you and Sean right talking about that one night? I think so, yeah. I try to talk about it and bring awareness as much as I can on every show I go to. Yeah. <laughs> people laugh at me. Wait until people start go missing and like, <laughs> something's going on here and there's these weird suction cups that we're finding now. <laughs> We Wait. found a boot with a suction cup. Yeah, yeah. Brent's gonna tope this thing in reality. Uh, and then I'm gonna be like, I told you so. <laughs> yeah. We don't want Nikki to go the way so many others in our groups have gone. Yes. Thomas <laughs> Steenberg, I'm gonna say your full name. What's your middle name? I'll say that too. <laughs> Thomas Nelson or Mitchell Steenberg. There you Thomas Nelson. Wait, Thomas? Nelson, Erwin, Mitchell, and Wolfgang Steenberg. Holy crap. That's too much <laughs> right now. <laughs> Use the, I uh, had a lot of uncles, so I had to put all the names uh, in. Just take the first letter of each one of those names and just call him that. <laughs> Sob or whatever that is. <laughs> it don't make no sense, though. So. Toad so, or As a matter of fact, the first no three months. Oh, there's a hawk. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a buzzard. I can't. I couldn't only see the underside. That's a buzzard. It's coming back this way. Yeah. Does he come back? See that? That's a that's a chicken. That's a uh, a turkey buzzard. Oh, yeah. That's a turkey yeah. buzzard. Back there. Yep. It was oh, big. They're trying to tell us something. There must be something dead back there. Then. Coming to take you away. Ha ha. Thunderbird is real. And I didn't catch Jeez, it. it Can I catch it? How do I do that? That's the Thunderbird. Ask Jason. Um, You'll have to adjust this one. On that. Nope, not it. that one. <laughs> this one? Take that it. one. Take screen. Come back. <laughs> she needs to film you. Right now. It's a paranormal creature from the UFMO. I've just been lying all this time. I love you, Thomas. I got kicked by Sasquatch. <laughs> Good, keep that in. And it took the proctologist weeks to get me back to normal. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah.